Today's video is sponsored on Patreon by Daniel Stewart. Mirin versus Kadena, Yannette and Jared. Well, we've got plenty of mana there and a time twister if we're desperate. It'd be nice to get into ramp, but yeah, we'll keep that. We can refill our hand with time twister if the game isn't going too well for us. Drawing two cloths will on turn one. Birds of Paradise for Kadena, and we'll see what we draw into here. Um, <laughs> an omniscience, yeah. We're going to make terrible draws. I think we just have to aim for the time twister. Could screw up our opponent's decent opening hands as well with that. Seeing a turn two Jensen Carthalian from the Jared player. Yannette throws down Pyramid of the Pantheon, and it's more ramping a bloom tender for Kadena. <laughs> okay, just as I say, we're going to go for the time twister. We draw in two. Kodama's Reach, so I'm actually going to play the Kodama's Reach here. Might be able to keep this hand in the end, I suppose. If we can go for Sarkin's Triumph and get the Goldspan Dragon. Start ramping with that, maybe. Looks like this might be Super Friends. Aminatu the Fate Shifter for Jared. And that will scry them, thanks to Jensen. They plus on the Aminatu and pass the turn. Warm Power Stone for the Esper player. Kadena into play with five cards in hand. They do get a free morph here if they want. They've obviously got three mana from the Bloom Tender now as well. Alright, amazingly, Kadena not getting down any morph creatures. Opportunistic Dragon can take a human. Don't think, apart from Jensen, there's any humans. Can obviously take artifacts with that as well, but yeah, I don't think we need to bother with Opportunistic Dragon this turn. Let's just hold up the Sarkin's Triumph, I think. Celestus from Jared. And then drawing a card and putting a card on top with Aminatu. Then shuffling with the Marsh Flats. So they get to shuffle the card away that they just dumped on top. Skyclave Relic kicked from the Annette player, so that will fix their colours for them. And at the end of their turn, seeing a Worldly Tutor from the Kadena, no doubt going after a Morph creature, which <laughs> we'll know what it is, ironically. Which isn't typical for Morph creatures, obviously. That is a Will Bender. Tapping down two mana and then playing out a morph creature, which we will just assume is Willbender. That cantrips them with their commander. Alright, and then a ley line of anticipation goes really well with Kadena as long as you can keep morph creatures in your hand. So as long as Bloom Tender stays in play, they can still flip round the Willbender. We could try a cloth's will here and wipe some creatures out. That might result in a scoop, unfortunately, and I'd Still don't think we can do anything next turn, even if we do that. So I think we still aim for the uh, Treasure Dragon here. And play the Sarkham's Triumph, we can play it next turn. And if they counter it, then so be it. At least it's not going onto our Omniscience. So put the Gold Span Dragon straight into our hand. And there is a Nature's Law, which I think we can play this turn. So throw out the Mountain, play Nature's Law. Which gets us into an untapped land and then we'll try the gold span dragon. Would be nice to swing in towards that Aminatu. Alright, they allow it in, so still have to worry about a will bender, but everyone knows it's there. So swing in at Aminatu. We will get a treasure token, which we'll tap for two mana. Might have to bait our opponent with a glass pool mimic onto the gold span dragon next turn, or a cloth's will or something. They almost have to counter a cloth's will. Aminatu drawing a card during the five colour player's turn. And pretty sure they're into five colours here. Actually, they might be missing black. Any colour of a land an opponent controls. Yeah, so they can generate black mana thanks to our opponents. So Jared Carthalian into play. And they will make a dragon with Jensen Carthalian. Then plussing on the Jared, so making a 3 3 Carvu token. Your net Cryptic Sovereign into play. Three power. Uh, doesn't have Death Touch, so we can still swing in the Gold Span Dragon towards it if we're desperate. Myriad Landscape being cracked by the Esper player likely fixes their white mana. There's an Alchemist Refuge in play now, which doesn't really matter with the Ley Line in play. And Earthcraft is a combo piece. Okay, two cards in hand, plenty of mana held up, so I think we do have to bait the Will Bender with a Cloth's Will. A Niv Mizzet Perun is really good. Alright, I think Glasspool Mimic onto the Goldspan Dragon will be pretty good here. Your net is holding up priority here, so I'm hoping we don't see a Pongify or something. It is allowed into play, so we get a couple of Goldspan Dragons. So let's go straight through to combat. We'll spread the damage around here. This can go in at the left, and we'll take one in down the middle as well. 
I just don't want the Kadena player to think that we're ganging up on him so that it might it might keep some interaction away from us. Either way, we're making treasure tokens, which is the real reason that we're swinging in here. You're not obviously blocking the damage there, but we'll keep our gold span dragon. And then I think it's just a case of trying to get our opponent to counter the cloth's will, which means we'll have to use some treasure mana. So yeah, let's just hold up the cloth's will and we'll pass through the turn. I mean, R2 swapping a card with the top of the library. The five color player throwing out a hero of precinct one. And yeah, really playing into a board wipe here is going to be upset to see the cloth's will if it lands. General Ferris Rockrick. That will allow them to scry with Jensen, make a 1-1 one, one human token with the hero of precinct one. Jared minusing down, so going to put some plus counters on the angel and the Carvu. So this thing jumps up to an 8-8 with trample and a 5-5 with flying and vigilance. The 5-5 angel swings in towards us. And surprisingly hold back the Carvu, probably to protect their planeswalkers. Temporal Mastery being revealed off the top here. So they can cast it for only two mana, getting an extra turn after this one. net swinging in, going to reveal the top card of the library. And getting a Thief of Sanity, which we'll be able to swing in next turn. Getting a lot of flyers into play, unfortunately, which Cloth's Will will not touch. And it is us that they are swinging in at. Then after hitting us, casting a Dream Cache. See us lantern, and then passing through to uh, their extra turn after this. You know, swinging in towards the five color player this time, even though there's a five five angel in the way. And then the thief of sanity swings in at us. You know, triggers, and they get themselves a prognostic sphinx. Thief of sanity triggering when they hit us, so they'll get a card from the top of our library. Attack a world render. I dare say that that's what they just took from us. Yep, yeah, we don't have a face down exile creature anymore, so. Getting yet another flyer from us. Need to try and land the Omniscience as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the Esper player has blue mana held up. Over to Kadena's turn now, Team of Sabretooth. And then activating the Team of Sabretooth. And then returning the Willbender back to hand and replaying it again for the card draw. Obviously triggering the Kadena will draw them the card there. Okay, so time to pull the trigger on the Cloth's Will now. X damage to each creature without flying. We'll put three into this, I think. Three mana into X on Cloth's Will, and they do tap down the um, the Bloom Tender there. <laughs> and they've got Heroic Intervention, uh, which means they can't afford the Will Bender now. So, I mean, it still clears away to Omniscience. The Esper player didn't have any interest in countering that, but, I mean, they know about the Will Bender, same as we do. Still got rid of some decent stuff from the Five Color player in their token generation and the Jensen. Alright, drawing into a breeding pool, so let's see here. If we shock in the breeding pool, we'll have two mana held up. So we could go for Mirim after we swing in with the Goldspan Dragons. So yeah, I think we do that here. Turn both of these in sideways towards the Kadena player because they're wide open. Landing eight damage on them. Now I'm actually forgetting about the Earthcraft, so... Yeah, we got the Heroic Intervention out of their hand. They can still untap a basic island and flip round this thing. I'm not willing to throw away my Omniscience for it. So let's go for our commander here, I think. They might counter the commander. The Esper player did hold up priority very briefly. Now Kadena is thinking about countering this. Allowing it into play, though. So I think maybe it's niv Mizit Perun I think we have to go for. This is uncounterable, so... Don't really have to worry about the Willbender with regards to this one. Mirim will trigger when it enters, and we don't have to worry about it being legendary. So now whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery, we'll get to shock something. Yeah, I think we pass at that. Really being held back on this omniscience, thanks to not having any counter magic. A Carvu being made by the Jared. Then Aminatu going to minus down the Jared and bring it back into play. So it enters with more loyalty, got an additional loyalty, enters with 5 and it had 4 on it previously. So now minusing that down and yeah, this car view is going to be massive. And I bet they're still looking in our direction. No, that's surprising. The 1313 swings in towards the Esper player. They block with our Ataka World Render and with the Prognostic Sphinx. And it looks like they've pulled back the Sphinx. And there we see an opt, so now's our opportunity to get rid of that morph creature over there. I think I'll actually leave it in play for now because 
I'd like them to be able to counter something from your net. Yeah, we'll go after the Aminatu here, I think. And then it looks like the five color player has something in response. That is a Cyclonic Rift, so... Yep, are they going to counter the Cyclonic Rift with the Willbender? I wouldn't have thought they'd care too much about that, to be honest. Let's encourage them to use it here. I don't want to be playing around Willbender for the rest of the game. It's held us off long enough, so we'll point some damage at the Willbender. And that might encourage them to actually counter the Rift before they lose the access to that. Alright, so now going for the untap on the Earthcraft. And flipping around Willbender. I'm assuming they're going to counter the Rift with it. Oh my god, have I been misremembering the card this whole time? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get a lot of comments on that one. Willbender, whenever it's turned face up, change the target of a spell or ability with a single target. Not the card I thought it was, can you tell? I don't play much morph. So I've been playing around the counter morph this whole time and that's not even what the card is. <laughs> Alright, and we get into a mana drain off the niv Mizzet Perun anyway. Uh, so let's get rid of Jared here as well. And I think this tells us that the Esper player doesn't have any counter magic in hand. Either way, we'll use ours that we've just drawn. Going on to the Cyclonic Rift, this will draw us a couple of cards. The niv Mizzet Perun doing a hell of a lot of work for us. Uh, we've already got damage on the Aminatu. Let's go after some of Kadena's mana. Just getting into lands here. I've got another couple of pings to go for. So we'll get rid of the Thief of Sanity. We successfully managed to get rid of this Cyclonic Rift, so yeah, it was a good idea to get the Willbender flipped up regardless. Well, either way, we'll finish it off because I don't need them bouncing that back to their hand and replaying it constantly. And we'll point a damage at Jared's face as well. So clearing a lot of lands off the top. If we can land the um, the Omniscience, then it doesn't necessarily matter. Because we are just assuming that there's no counter magic from the Asper player at this point. May well draw into it though. The Opt is finally going to resolve. Yannette with five cards in hand goes straight through to the attack phase. And both creatures swinging in, so they get a Scry 3 from the Prognostic Sphinx first. And then Yannette triggering as well. And revealing an Arcane Sanctum this time. I think that's the first time they've whiffed with it. Uh, so both the Sphinx and the Yannette swinging in towards Jared. Tragic Arrogance, there we go. It was about time we saw a board wipe. Uh, each player choose from among permanents that player controls. An artifact, a creature, an enchantment and a walker. So we get to keep our treasure token at least. See what cards we draw into before we make any decisions. First one is at Sushi. We'll try and get rid of the Teamer Sabertooth here. We'll point a couple of damage over there. And then we draw another card which allows a couple more pings. So uh, yeah, they don't have a basic um, forest. So shouldn't be able to do anything about this. And then we'll point the other piece of damage at the um, Esper player directly. I think I'd rather keep niv Mizzet, to be honest. Oh, they get to choose, do they, with Tragic Arrogance? For each player you choose. All right, okay, so they allow us to keep the gold span Dragon. Return Miriam to the Command Zone. Yes, we do. Then it's Noxious Revival from the Kadena player, so <laughs> getting that Willbender back won't make the mistake of it not being a counter magic spell, though. So down comes a Morph Creature again. They've got zero cards in hand because... It is the Willbender that they drew into this turn. Kadena will obviously cantrip them again though. And then it's Bajuka Bog, likely exiling, yep, our graveyard. I don't think we have much means of mass reanimation in a teamer deck. So I don't think that really matters. Probably a good idea to empty a graveyard full of dragons though. It does keep us from shuffling things back in with the Time Twister as well. Then the Kadena swing it in towards us. Alright, so with the mana that we get from the mana drain. All right, so we get two mana from countering the, um, the cyclonic rift with the mana drain. I think we just have to, everyone's near enough empty handed apart from the Esper player and I don't think they have counter magic anyway based on how the previous turns have gone. So let's just try and land this omniscience already. Okay, excellent, managing to land that. So first thing we want is the Utvara Hellkite. Then we can play at Sushi as well. Throw out Opportunistic Dragon, and yeah, I don't think it's a wise idea to play the Time Twister when we're refilling a couple of players' hands. Especially mm, if we had Miriam in play, then I'd be much more likely to do it. 
Uh, we'll take three mana away from our opponent, because Pyramid of the Pantheon does have brick counters on it now. So we'll just throw out a Volcanic Island. And I think we're just hoping that our Omniscient stays intact for a turn cycle. Uh, we'll swing in at the Esper player. Triggering the Utvara Hellkite and the Goldspan Dragon will get another treasure token. Can't afford the overloaded Cyclonic Rift, unfortunately. Do get a 6-6 Dragon, though. <laughs> Straight off the top, a Maelstrom Archangel. Not particularly dangerous until they get their commander in play and start dumping a bunch of plus counters on that. They might be really lucky and get into a big creature that they can get in for free. Well, just going to be playing defensively at the moment, I imagine. It's only a matter of time before someone scoops, the Esper player dies to his own scoop button. I think the Sultai player just dropped a land then and is going to pass, so uh, yeah. Really glad that I didn't go for the Time Twister previously, especially with the Esper player just scooping on us there. We're at a really good advantage over our opponents here. Just drawing into another land again. So just throw out a Tiger and let's play our Commander. So Mirin back into play again. Now, can we get rid of a player or not? Well, soon find out. Gonna swing everything in at Kadena. Triggers Utvara Hellkite a bunch of times, as well as the Goldspan Dragon. Still one mana shy of overloading the Cyclonic Rift, unfortunately, but hopefully we can bounce a problem permanent of the five colour player. <laughs> Alright, the Kadena player surviving at two mana. As much as I want to play the Time Twister into the Omniscience, there's just no reason to at this point. We'll pass again force our opponents to deal with us. Activating the Celestis over here in order to draw a card. We're going to have to discard a card to that, but they already drew one during the uh, draw step, of course. So discarding to that a Transguild Courier. Uh, they decide to scoop there as well, feeding Kadena to the Wolves. Might be that Kadena top decks a board wipe here, so at 30 life there's potential that they could have survived. It's not likely, but it's not over till it's over. We get another morph, so this will draw them a card. <laughs> and Kadena by turn 9 finally getting into the morph creatures. Throwing down another one. Then Earthcraft going to tap down this one and untap a land. Doing it again. We know that this one is the Willbender. Alright, and what is this one? Brine Elemental, flip round. And each opponent skips their next untap step. Okay, well we still get them thankfully. So our opponent scoops to that. Yeah, that was a pretty sketchy game. I held off on the Omniscience way longer than I should have done, thanks to not reading the card on the Willbender. Uh, what was this one? This was a mischievous Quana. Uh, yeah, thinking that this was the counter spell, I'm sure we could have got the Omniscience down way sooner. But got to see some cool interactions with two niv -Mizzets. That did a hell of a lot of damage and drew us loads of cards. Um, just in the end it wasn't worth going for the time twister, we'll see if the client will allow us to draw. See what we would have got into with that potentially. Obviously not seeing the shuffle here, but have a good idea of what we would have drawn into, yeah. Looks like it was a good idea to not go for the time twister anyway, if this is the type of thing we would have drawn into, because there's no dragons there whatsoever. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed this visit to Miram, it was a really popular one when it first came out, but... Not sure if everyone's bored of it at this point because 17 sets have released since then. If you did like it then be sure to leave it a thumbs up because that will help push it out to other potential viewers on YouTube. And please consider donating on Patreon as well. These videos are very very time consuming and any monetary value I can gain from the channel is very much appreciated. Huge thank you to the patrons who already support. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.